the start of another Grand Prix season, 1997. Indonesia is the place. Tortelli has moved up to the 250s. Britain's Paul Malin has to be a favourite. And I wonder what sort of a year everybody is going to have. Well, it's critical for this man. Paul Malin, he's, uh, he sustained an injury practising a week ago. He's come out to practice today. He's not a happy puppy at all. And I wonder if he's going to make it to the line of heat number one in the 125 World GP Series. No, he doesn't get to the gate. The gate drops and they go away without Britain's Paul Malin. And that is not going to augur well for him at the beginning of the season. Who is it going to be up front? Well, Chico Chioli goes straight to the front very, very quickly. He's setting the pattern. And the man that could well run with him for the entire year is going to be Vial. So they have gone out very, very quickly. And the popular American, Bob Moore, a critical year for this man as well. Come across to Europe again, and that's always difficult. He's really got to stamp his authority in the early GPs. If he doesn't have a real crackerjack year, he may well go back to the States and say, that's enough of living in Europe for a while. But while he's up and running in this sort of position, Bob Moore is going to give it 110% for effort. And right now, already into a very, very good position. So this is heat number one, and they'll all settle down and get the whole thing together. Charlier is up there as well. All the top runners, Sagai is there, Carl Nunn is out there today. Brian Jorgensen on the new cat finning machine as well. But this could well be the man that they have to chase around Europe. Chico Chiodi, a very, very popular and a very quick rider, riding for Yamaha yet again. Bob Moore, well, he knows all about motocross from the States. Been in some very, very major teams during his career. Vial, he knows this is heat number one, but they've got to get points in the bank. They'll all know by now that Malin has not come to the line. Paul Malin, the man riding the Cadbury, used, the Cadbury Boost Yamaha. Paul is the one man that could win in 1997, but with a DNF right at the beginning, or a, not even a, a starter for the first heat, that does not augur well, and psychologically, that's going to give Paul a problem. He's going to certainly have to play catch-up um, later today if he comes to the line in heat number two. But of course, in future races, not good for him. Carl Nunn putting in a good showing early. He's got to ride under the watchful eye of Dave Thorpe alongside Brian Jorgensen on the cat finning machine. A very, very professional team, well set up. And of course, Dave Thorpe knows all about management and he'll soon be telling the riders exactly what he expects of them. Charlier is up there as well. So guy's still going well. But it's early, early days. They've all come across to Indonesia to the Yakarta Raceway for the first race of the season. Sagai again. Brian Jorgensen in there. But the checker flag goes down. Heat number one. Chico Chiodi, 1-2-1. One, one. Could well be the pattern. Bob Moore, a very, very strong ride for Yamaha. Great start to the opening race of the year for him. That's the man. Points in the bank already. Down to the line again. Heat number two. Malin is not going to make it for the day. Malin heading for the airport already. Not a good start to the season for him. Somebody goes right the way around. But looked to be like a Honda going into the corner first. But we'll soon have a look. Well, there he is. The little man with the curly hair. Chiodi and Bob Moore. This could well be the pattern that we're going to see for 1997. And what a shame that the Cadbury Boost Yamaha rider of Paul Malin has already got on the plane and gone home with a bad back. And of course, with a back injury, they can go on for weeks and weeks. So he's going to have to do some work very, very quickly. But the pattern is coming out. Bellametti having a good ride. Camelengo, Nunn, Puzo, Charlio, Federici. Federici, he's going to have to move up in the points quite quickly as well. And of course, number three, Vial going to have to keep a watchful eye out for him but this is only race number one in Indonesia a long long season to go 12 races if all go according to plan and what a shame that Malin has gone missing already number 100 that is Alessandro Puzar he could well be on the podium many many times during 97 of course the top riders only have gone through to make the long trip to Malaysia and it is a long long way some incredible heat during the week building up to the first race. 
and they know that they've got to get points early in the season. Otherwise, you start playing catch-up, and that's no good. Tortelli dominated this last year. He was absolutely sensational on the Kawasaki. He's moved up to the 250s. That's left the gates wide open, and I think the general opinion was that Paul Malin could well pick up the world title. If ever there is to be a year, 1997 has to be the year, but not the start that Yamaha or Paul Malin wanted. But Yamaha with some very, very quick riders from Europe, that's the man that Yamaha know. If Paul doesn't get it, the little man Chiodi could certainly get it without too much trouble at all. Bob Moore, of course, in with a very, very big chance. And so is that man number three, Vial, more than capable of bringing home the title as well. But they've got to beat the ever-smiling Chico Chiodi. Very, very professional setup there as well. Well, what a year we're in for. Only round one in Yogyakarta in Indonesia. Long way to come out to Malaysia, but the hospitality is just wonderful. The track very, very well prepared. Everybody with their new setups for 97. And I wonder at the end of the year just who it's going to be. Pizarre now starting to make up some points. Well, he just comes straight back again. And Vial says that's no problem to me. Chiodi, the winner of heat number one. And I would say at this stage he has heat number two well under control. And that will be just the sort of the uh, the sort of season opener that Chiodi would like to have. Pizar and Bob Moore will certainly chase him around all the tracks of Europe, the better known circuits for some of them. There we go. Chiodi and Yamaha, two wins at Yogyakarta in Indonesia. Can't be bad for Chiodi and Yamaha. Well, from Malaysia across to France, the circuit is Pernay, and the race leaders have got it all to do again. Well, Malin on the far side of the circuit, you see him going right into the corner, then he made a mess of it. So Malin is back, he went well in qualifying this morning, but this is the home circuit for Vial and Charlier, and surely they will shine here today. What an amazing bit of acceleration from Paul Malin, the Cadbury boost, Yamaha coming out of the gate on the far side. If he could have just squared off a fraction earlier, he would have been away and gone, and the rest of the field would have been playing catch-up. But that wasn't to be, but at least Paul is back and running. Vial has gone to the front very, very quickly. Federici, he's a little further back than he would like to be. A series leader from Indonesia, of course. That is the man, Chico Chiodi. And I really wonder who is going to beat him in these opening races. Federici looking very, very strong today. Bob Moore always there. And if he can stay out of injuries throughout the season, Bob Moore could well be on the podium many, many times as well. And Paul Malin with a problem now. Nice to see Paul back after the back injury of Indonesia. But now he made a mistake, in the, a very small mistake in the first turn. Now he's made a mistake going down the hill. That's cost him a couple of places. And really, Paul has got to get onto the leaderboard very, very quickly. Psychologically, all the other riders know that Malin can win in 1997. If he drops a couple of races, that's just going to give him an enormous problem. He's going to start trying too hard. That's when injuries occur, and it just makes it very, very difficult. We've seen with Everts in the 250, it's consistency that counts all the time. And this is where Chiodi, he had two wins in Indonesia. So he comes to France with his tail very, very high indeed. The little Italian man riding on a very, very quick Yamaha. But Federici is another one that could be up there quite easily at the end of the season. And of course, Charlier, we said earlier, this is his home circuit. This is his home crowd as well. So he knows all about it. Uh, and of course, Vial, that's the other rider that's going to be there every single weekend if he's injury free. But another win for Chico. Well, he's just starting to bank him very, very quickly. And in second spot, Federici. Third overall, Charlier. 
And so they go to the podium at the end of heat one. And from the podium, straight back down to the line for heat number two. Well, a problem for Bob Moore. He should have been right in the middle of the gate. He had a spark plug problem. That's going to put him right on the outside gate because there's nowhere else to go. It's looking like a Tesco parking lot down there. No space for Bob Moore. That won't please him. There he is right up against our camera. Bob Moore, well, he, he pushes his way in. But if they turn left there, they're going to really all push him right into the berm. So out of the, they come out of the corner. And Sagai, Sagai goes to the front very, very quickly. Well, that's good to see. But Sagai better capitalize on this very, very quickly because Vial and Federici and Kiyote will be coming up in a big, big hurry. The home circuit for some of these French riders here today. And they know as it moves around Europe, you might well have a hometown advantage. And of course, you know the circuit and the supporters always lift you just that extra 10%. We see it at Fox Hills every year when the Union Jacks come out and the air horns start going. The British riders rise to the occasion, but today it's the turn of the trickler. And of course, all the French riders have got that added advantage. Vial looking very, very strong indeed. He knows he's got a job of work to do, but I just wonder about Chico Chiodi. Two wins in Indonesia in the opening race today. He won the first race of the day and he was back on the podium. So that's three out of three for him. And Chiodi starting to look very, very dominant. But they all know that Vial can do the goods. And there he is across the line. Vial takes the race. <laughs> Dust in Indonesia, dust in France, a quagmire in Spain, never mind the rain. Those bikes are not going to look like that for too long. Get your pressure washer, washers ready. The starter can't even get his gumboots out the mud. 15 second board is up and running. The gate will drop. Well, I hope we can pick up the numbers because they're going to look like little brown jobs by the end of the first lap. Well, they go out straight away. Van Drunen goes to the front. Well, that's good to see. Van Drunen and Massio. So they have gone through. We can see them paddling with their legs. They look like KX60 riders. That's their riding style when they start at six years of age. They tend to paddle through all the ruts on the circuit. Bob Moore making progress, albeit slowly. Chiodi, he's going fine at the moment. But the mud really is incredible. A quagmire of the stuff. And of course, as soon as that starts to bank up, the bikes get very, very, very heavy indeed. Not easy to ride. And if you drop it, you can barely pick the thing up again. And once the handlebars go into the mud, then everything is slippery. And it just becomes a horrible, sticky mess. And not the greatest fun in the world. But this is a GP and it's the same for everybody. So you better just get on with the job. Now they've got to get up that hill. We've seen some strange things with hills and GPs over the years. Well, if anybody goes down on that hill, they're going to be there for a while until the pickup truck arrives. And having said that, he takes his own excursion and goes on his way. Turn right at the top, then they come down again. Well, we said that the race numbers were going to be difficult to see. Pressure washers at the ready. Even Drunen still putting on a great display of riding. Bob Moore just sorting himself out with something there as well. And Van Drunen, number 19. His number is nice and clean because he's in front and he's doing everything right. Look at the dust. Just a few inches below the surface of all that mud and the dust is already there. Chico Chiodi keeping it all together. He knows that he's got wins to carry forward from Indonesia and a first heat victory in France. The old with some nice points on the board as well. Now all of a sudden they've got the mud of Spain and they've got all the work to do all over again. Well, he's going to be there for a while. Just having a quiet discussion with his bike. His buddy says, you better move because that's the line that we want to use. And we need to get some traction out of there. That is the ever-smiling Chico Chiodi. And down another rider goes. This is Grand Prix racing. Well, it's the same for everybody. They want GP points. And you better try and pick a couple up today. Because it's not going to get any easier as the year progresses those are the pit crew belonging to bob moore 
on that board that you can't see it says you are in first place bob moore must have a beaming smile underneath that rain sodden helmet bob moore takes the lead the ever popular american putting in a great display of riding here today in the mud and he's certainly done everything right today so some very very valuable points if he can just get across the line without dropping it the checkered flag is around the corner bob moore has done enough the smiling american with some very valuable points so a quick hug and a wash and a polish for him chiodi is already back to the line with a clean machine so is puzar and so is bob moore they've got it all to do again can bob moore mix up the points and make it two out of two the gate drops yet again bob moore with a very very good start on the right of your picture at the moment on the extreme right bob moore will cut across so moore on an absolute high today in the mud the americans not necessarily known for their expertise in mud riding but he certainly put on a great race today and bob moore picking up some very very valuable points in the first race now we've got the little brown jobs yet again that's chiodi you can see from the shirt the yamaha mounted rider well that's the man that they're chasing chiodi with some very valuable points early in the season then vial came through to shine and all of a sudden today belongs to bob moore so that's good for the series and that'll get them on to uh, to round four with the points really very very mixed up bob moore says what is this tear off rip offs whatever you've got trying to keep those goggles in place not a good thing to throw them away early in the race but bob moore really has got things well under control working his way through you've just got to keep that back wheel turning if you drop the bike that's going to cost him a lot of valuable time you can see those ruts that have developed there's a bit of a dry line once you get underneath that mud you can get some traction out of the corner puzar has found that as well so puzar goes on his way bob moore must just be wondering every time he comes round. you don't need a back marker you need to get a dry line up that hill you can see the line that they're following just to get some traction if you throw it away there you're going to be there for a while you can see that they're all following that snake-like line up the hillside then into the picture is Sagai. that's another rider that could do well oh what a mistake you don't see that too often he got off the dry line now he's got to turn around and do it all again one of the best riders in the world and it just shows that even chico Chiodi can make a mistake bob moore stronger and stronger in the mud in spain well exactly what we didn't want to see bob moore has dropped it the bike has gone down look how incredibly difficult it is to get that bike up it is so slippery that's allowed puzar to go to the front and puzar to take the checkered flag and so from the rain in spain and the mud in spain to austria round four of the 125 gp bob moore missing we saw that he went down in spain and had a broken elbow chico chiodi is back and looking good the board turns the gate will drop heat one of round four of the world championship who is it going to be today are we going to see any new emerging riders bob moore has gone missing after spain he has had a problem and De Pasquia, that's good to see a different rider up front. Alessandra Pizarro is there. Sagai having himself a good start. And Jamie Dobb, number 72 in your picture. The man that went over to the States now back and riding for Rob Hooper out of the UK. Bike number 72. That's nice to see Jamie Dobb. He didn't ride in Indonesia. He didn't have a good day in France or in Spain. But he says the track in Austria is just what he likes and he could well have a good showing. So Puzar and all of a sudden De Pasquia in front of him. He wanted to dispense with him very, very quickly and get on his way. A very, very good circuit here. That is number three, Vial. One of the very, very serious contenders, but they're all serious contenders. This is only the fourth GP of the series. De Pasquia leading at the moment. 
There's Jamie Dobb in your picture, bike number 72. And wouldn't it be wonderful in Paul's absence to see a British rider coming through? Injuries can play such a cruel trick on you. And Paul really has been injury ridden during the winter and during the opening races of Indonesia and France. And all of a sudden we've got Jamie Dobb flying the flag for the UK. Be interesting to see where Carl Nunn and Brian Jorgensen are as well. Number 25, Federici. He will always be there as well. Alessandro Puzar on bike number 100. There's the man leading the series overall at the moment. Chico Chiodi starting to just work their way up the field. But look at the ride that Jamie Dobby is putting in. This is good to see. Then we can pick up on bike number 12. That's Marcio. Back to Puzar as they come down the hills. The hills that are covered in snow during the skiing season. Very, very pretty race circuit. And Chiodi on the Yamaha working his way through. Federici, I wonder where he's going to finish up at the end of the season. Jamie Dobb now. He's caught right up to De Pasquier as well. And he can certainly pick up some very, very valuable points for the Suzuki team of Rob Hooper today. The track starting to get very, very rough already. Head down, tail up, and doing a good job of work. Pizar, Chico Chiodi now onto his tail. Chiodi, who has been perhaps in the absenteeism of Paul Malin, he certainly has become the hot favorite for 1997. The little man of motocross, the ever beaming face of Chico Chiodi, riding on that very, very quick Yamaha indeed. Federici just putting in lap after lap. But he will be told that the hard-charging Jamie Dobb aboard the Suzuki is on his way. The Chiodi over those jumps. Puzar, and he has now got Federici behind him. And then behind Federici, that's the man that we're watching at the moment. Jamie Dobb and Dupaskia on the Kawasaki. And then a very much better ride from Massio. But at the moment, it's all about one man, Chico Chiodi, the checkered flag, not that far away from him. There he goes. He will get the race win. In second spot will be Alessandro Puzar in our picture now. And third man to cross the line must surely be Federici. Back to the line. Heat number two. Can Chiodi pull off another one? What about Massio and De Pasquia? They came out of the starting gate so well in the first heat of the day. Alessandro Puzar. Bike number 100 has gone to the front. He was second in the first heat. He now leads the second heat. And look at Jamie Dobb again. Well, this is good to see. We might well see a Union Jack later in the series. By the time we get to Fox Hills, wouldn't it be nice to have the air horns going and the Union Jacks flying? with Jamie Dobb aboard the Rob Hooper Suzuki. Well, he's certainly doing a great job of work today. Alessandra Puzar, you know that he's got the little man behind him, and that's not a good thing to have in your rear view. Maracciotti, ever closer. Puzar will have been told by his pits exactly what he's got to do and what he'd like to do, but life's not always like that. And they'll also know that Vial is closing on them as well. And Jamie Dobb up to fourth overall in the Austrian Grand Prix. Bike number nine, that's Camelengo that came into the picture. Look at those adverse camber corners. That'll sort out the men from the boys. A very, very interesting and a very technical track for a change. It's always so good to have something that sorts out the more technical riders other than those that can just hold it wide open from point to point so Jamie Jamie Dobb with his head down he likes the circuit he knows the circuit and you can see it's coming through today that he really is having a good time can Puzar win heat number two from Chiodi and keep in contention overall Chiodi ahead overall but it's early days the man that must be wondering what sort of a day he's having is Alessandra Puzar, 
He's perhaps more, won more races on this circuit than anybody else. Many, many years of being unbeaten. And perhaps Jamie Dobb can now start to pick up that enviable title of winning races here in Austria. Fourth spot at the moment. He's chasing some of the best in the world, but he's certainly putting on a great display of riding aboard that Suzuki. Very, very good to see Vial. Hot, hot property for 1997, as is, of course, number 25, Mr. Federici. Number seven comes into our peach picture. That's Bellamotti. I'm sure we're going to see more of him as the season goes on. That is the race leader. Alessandro Puzar, he will want to be on the podium and he's not far from it at the moment. Couple of corners only. He's put in a great ride ahead of Chico Chiodi. Believe it or not, they are buddies off the circuit. But when you're racing, you're racing. Puzar takes the win, a great ride from him. And so he will go to the podium with his connection. Chico Chiodi. And I'm sure they'll have time for a quick eyeball. Here they go. A great race. And so we leave Austria and a short hop across to Italy. Round five of the 1 to 5 World Champions and down to the line for the first heat of the day. Well, flush with success from Austria, Alessandra Puza, can he do it again aboard bike number 100? A left-hand turn at the end of a very, very, very fast start line. Puza again, you can see the yellow shirt tucked in behind him. Looked like Sagai to me. Sagai seemed to come out of the gate very, very quickly as well. And Federici, Puza, Federici, Chico Chiodi, the three musketeers. They are getting closer every single weekend. They are there. Number nine, that's Camalengo coming into the picture as well. Well, a very, very good start for Federici. Excellent start for Puzar as well. He had a great, great ride in Austria a fortnight ago. And here he is back today. Sagai looking very, very good as well. Number 25, up and over goes Federici. He's got time for a bit of showtime already. Early in the day for that. Needs to get the power down and get some work done. Puzar behind him. He gets up and over. And of course, Chico Chiodi, the man that's leading the series after four rounds already. We come to Italy for round number five. They know that it's a long, long year ahead. Massio, he's always in there, but he's just not on the podium. Bike number 21, nice to see Carl Nunn at last on the cat finning Honda. He's starting to up the tempo as well. Carl Nunn, one of the younger riders to come out of the UK. He needs to get up there into the top five. More than capable of doing it. He's a very, very consistent and a very smooth rider. If he can just get out of the gate quickly and get on to the top three, he could well be up into the top five by mid-season. Chico Chiodi, what do you have to do to beat this man? Now ahead of Alessandro Puzar. There, another bank of points goes into the bank. Number 25, Federici takes the win. That's good. Chiodi takes second. Puzar takes third. Straight back to the line again. We're certainly seeing some different finishing positions. The next hole shot. Well, this is an interesting thing. Alessandro Puzar has gone through. Number 20 comes into our frame as well. That's Bartolini. Bartolini now leads Puzar. Chiodi is behind him. Then we've got Brian Jorgensen coming into the picture. That's good stuff. Behind Brian Jorgensen is Carl Nunn. This is an excellent situation. Charlie is up there as well. Well, we're really starting to see different riders now. What a great start for Bartolini, but throw it away, Sam. Well, that was a big one. Number 25, Federici, right up the embankment. The bike came back, fortunately missed him, but that really could have been a very, very nasty accident. So Puzar and Chiodi really starting to stamp their authority on the 125 GP World Series. Puzar, the fans are out there weekend after weekend, and he's had a couple of great, great rides. 
he will know that Chiodi is behind him, chiseling away and coming through, and Bartolini, what a great day he has had here at the Italian GP. He's followed by Beta Manair, an old friend of mine, and old being the operative word, and then into our picture comes Camalengo, who's looking better and better. That's good to see Brian Jorgensen is up there as well. And then behind them, the hard-charging Massio on bike number 12. Well, has he done enough? The fans think so. Pew's armor certainly think so. He would like these points, but Chiodi will not give up. Chiodi leading the championship at this point. There's the checker flag. A brave man in the center of the circuit. Puzar takes the win, followed by Chico Chiodi, one and two again. And so from Italy to round six and the double header at Fox Hills, a magnificent day, 40,000 British spectators. What a day we're in for. Race number one, Chiodi leads the series, but who's gonna be the king of Fox Hills today? The circuit immaculately prepared. Down they go for the first time over the big double. They need to all get clear of that. They come up the hill to the second commentary position now. This is where they'll turn and run down again. Puzar is there, Chiodi is there, and so are 38 other riders. The circuit lined with spectators, a rider goes down. Oh, not good. That's not good. They go up to the top of the circuit and start running down. For the first time, Chico Chiodi has gone to the front already. They put a lot of water down on the circuit last night. Mike Church, the man responsible for putting this track together for the British Grand Prix. And what a job of work they've done. Earth moving equipment all the way around the circuit. Water tankers, excavators, front end loaders. They've got so much equipment. This is where a rider went down. You watch on the left hand side of your picture. Somebody got out of shape badly. Somebody coming over that jump, clipped the back of it. There they go, he went down in an attempt to avoid it, the green Kawasaki on your left, he went straight into him and down he went as well. So four riders come down and that last rider really went in at a great, great speed. What a shame. Lap one of the British Grand Prix here at Fox Hills. So they'll play pickup sticks for a minute. Meanwhile, look at the crowd. Motocross is alive and well and living in the UK. What incredible support. Listen to the Hooters. You'll certainly see the Union Jacks come out if JB Dobb can do anything in this race today. Paul Malin injured his foot yesterday, unable to get through qualifying. So Paul Malin is a non-starter today. JB Dobb and Carl Nunn and Brian Jorgensen will have to fly the flag for the UK and well capable they are of doing just that job of work. There's Jamie Dobb in your picture now. He's aboard the Rob Hooper Suzuki. Well, a problem. He's gone down or he's had a bike problem. We're not sure which. Throws the goggles away in absolute disgust. But the Union Jacks remain out there. Meanwhile, up front, the little effervescent Chico Chiodi being hounded yet again by Alessandro Puzar. Well, who is going to be able to catch these two flying Italians? Bob Moore out with injury, so that's cost him plenty. They go away from us yet again up the hill in first and second, but they don't know that Federici is starting to close the gap very, very quickly. And then coming down towards us, that's Carl Nunn aboard the cat finning Honda. He's certainly putting on a great display of riding as well today. Our race leader, Chico Chiodi, he must surely know that he's almost done enough, but Federici, certainly he is up to tempo. Federici has got in there as well. Look at him, pitches it sideways. He'll want to cut across to the right. They drop down a very, very steep hill. Perhaps you could cut inside that little puddle at the bottom, but no one's been brave enough to do it yet. Federici makes a move. Puzar closes the gate yet again. 
They go up that very, very steep hill. They'll turn to the right. They've got a double to do at the top of that. Puzo has got plenty of pressure. He knows that Federici is coming very, very quickly indeed. But Puzo and Chiodi, they bang in the corner. Well, we'll see what comes out of that. Now Federici can see what's going on in front of him. He knows that there's a war evolving. I think Puzo has got a problem. Federici has gone through very, very quickly. Puzo may well, he's looking down at the left-hand side of the bug. He may well have got a gear lever problem. Chiodi is still up front. Puzar, he has got a problem, I'm sure. And Federici is closing. And 40,000 spectators know that Federici is on the charge. This is what they've come to Fox Hills to see. This is the double header, the 250s later in the day. They go down the hill together. Can anybody cut inside? No, they don't. Chiodi keeps it tight. Federici goes to the right. They'll pull up the hill again. At the top of this, they've got a hook across to the right and drop down again. Very, very quickly indeed. Chiodi riding so well here at Fox Hill. Federici has thrown every conceivable style of ride at him, but he just can't make it stick. There he tries on the outside now, but Chiodi goes to the inside and there's nowhere left for Federici to go. Pews are dropping a little further back. I'm sure he must have a problem of sorts. So Chiodi takes the win. Federici will take second. And we'll soon find out about Puzar. The post-mortem starts. There'll be some explaining as to what happened. But no time for this. Back to the line. Heat number two of the 125s at Fox Hills. This is where they've really got to concentrate. They go down the straight, turn right, and then they go over that very, very big double where we saw a mishap in the 250 race earlier today. They've got to get clear of that. This is where they run down for the first time. Up and over they go. Can they all get clear? We can see number 11, Brian Jorgensen's in there. We know that Federici is well placed again. Where is Chiodi? It would appear that the whole pack has gone through. Federici is up there. Well, now they're starting to go in. So we were saying earlier, the 250s were starting to cut inside that corner and that gives you a huge advantage. They couldn't decide whether to go left or right and they've all just gone down in a pile on the floor. So, number 25, Federici, that looked so good. We heard earlier that he had a problem in the first race of the day, but he'll come back to do it all over again. Number 21, that's Carl Nunn, moving up through the pack very, very nicely on the cat fitting machine. So, at the moment, Federici is doing what he knows best. He's got Chiodi behind him. He's got number 11, that's Brian Jorgensen, having a much, much better ride than in the first heat. And then number 72 aboard the Rob Hooper Suzuki, that's Jamie Dobb. The spark went out in the first race and he really was very, very cross. There's Stefan Everts having a look. Mr. Super Cool, hands in his pockets, quite happy to have a look at some lines and pick up some ideas from the 125 riders. Chico Chiodi goes to the front and he now takes over the lead from Federici and then Puzar gets back in there again. So exactly the same three riders, Puzar, Federici and Chiodi, all of them there together yet again over the big double. Puzar and Federici together. They want to keep themselves out of trouble. I know that there's very, very valuable Grand Prix championship points here in round six at Fox Hills. Chiodi was leading overall after Italy and he's done himself no harm whatsoever at Fox Hills today. A great ride coming from Jamie Dobb. He certainly is starting to look better and better and a very strong ride coming from Carl Nunn, the youngster from Milden Hall. Chico Chiodi circulating like a Rolex watch. He's done some 
good work and those will be valuable points. Fox Hills at its absolute best and a very appreciative crowd. They really do enjoy their motocross in the UK. Chiodi has been sensational. So has this man, Alessandro Puzar. He's given it everything he's got. And even when Federici wanted to bang bars, he was quite happy to mix it with the best there were and just keep going. Now, from the double header, of course, they've got the 250s on the same circuit, so that starts to make it busy. But no problems to Brian Jorgensen. He's still circulating like clockwork as well. The track is getting very, very rough. And this, their final race of the day, a great ride from Jamie Dobb. I'm sure as the season progresses, JB Dobb has had a slow start, but I'm sure he's going to be in the points after a fine, fine ride at Fox Hills today. So the three flying riders yet again, Chiodi, Federici and Puzar. Vial missing, but he will be back very, very soon. Then it's Brian Jorgensen. He's put in a good result, followed by Jamie Dobb. Then it must surely be Johnny O'Bear. Well, Johnny O'Bear now hounded down by Carl Nunn on the cat finning machine. Carl Nunn, who got a terrible start. He collided with somebody on the start line, and he was right at the back of the pack. Now he's got up onto the tail of Johnny O'Bear. Carl Nunn riding now a very, very clever race. He's looking at the inside. He's looking at the outside. He's got to find a spot to get past Johnny O'Bear. There's a drop off to the left down here. That might be difficult. Can he set him up either for the bottom left hander, if he can square off sooner, or he could run wide, cut across, if he can get the power on up the hill sooner. Well, the Honda just goes steaming away past Johnny O'Bear. So a good move there from Carl Nunn. And then back to the front, Chiodi, bike number 121, the little flying Yamaha mounted Italian. He knows that he's done enough at Fox Hills today. The crowd love him to pieces. A very, very popular rider with all the crowds and with the, uh, the fellow riders as well. He has done enough. He knows that the checkered flag is just at the top of this next hill. And he knows that the rest of the pack are behind him. And those are very, very valuable 125 GP championship points yet again in the bank very, very soon for Chico Chiodi. This is a long jump that he'll take up to the top. Alessandro Puzar, as so often he has been behind him. And then the flying Federici aboard bike number 25. A great day's racing at Fox Hills. Brian Jorgensen, he knows that it's nearly over for him. Cat Finning Honda riders looking professional. The Hooters for Jamie Dobb. And we said earlier the Hooters and the Union Jacks would come out. Paul Malin missing, but Nunn and Jorgensen and Jamie Dobb have done a great, great job. For the Brits here today at Fox Hills, the crowds really are very, very patriotic. And the Union Jacks waving all the way around the circuit. And British Motocross is the winner yet again. Chiodi, well, he just gets better and better as the season goes on. At the end of round six here at Fox Hills today, he will be the clear overall leader in the series. Is Chico Chiodi. He knows that he's got more valuable points. And at this stage of the series, it's really only Puzar and Federici that can catch him. Vial and Malin have just fallen by the wayside. Jamie, any chance of a repeat of the uh, result in Austria today? Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, I just keep trying to give 100% and hopefully I can get off the start uh, in a decent position and pull my way through. If you don't make the start, it's pretty tough out there, I believe. Uh, I think it's better here for passing than other places. It's going to get real rough and uh, it's going to form more lines, so hopefully uh, I'll be okay. Kiko? Is possible for two wins again today? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's not easy. I won't win today because I want to go 
the point to a championship. Ah, uh, it's not, not easy. Well, you heard from the maestro. It sums it up. It's not easy. He's quite right. 39 other riders all trying to get into that first corner first. Chico Chiodi, the words of the professor. The gate drops. Down they go. Bob Moore is back from injury. Vial is back from injury. Malin is still missing with injuries and it's too late for him to do anything about it whatsoever. Vial goes to the front. Well, he's left it late in the season, but Vial on a good day will certainly run with the best in the world. Bob Moore back today, that's good to see. He's up and running again and I'm sure he will fly the flag. Nice to see Bartolini back again. He missed a couple of heats as well, but they're back today. Camelengo looking good. But it's still really all about Chiodi, Puzar and Federici. We're over the halfway mark in the season and psychologically to play catch up is just so incredibly difficult. And they know that the Italians are just flying away with it at the present time. The Yamahas in the 125 class are proving to be so dominant Weekend after weekend, Vial wants to get back with his buddies. Camelengo wants to put on a good display of riding. Well, certainly a good display of riding is what we're seeing today at Slovenia. Number 25, he's always there, is Federici, but he hasn't been high enough on the leadership board. Chiodi and Puzar are the two men that I think will take it right the way to the wire. Barring, of course, crazy injuries. But I think Chiodi is starting to ride some very, very well calculated races now. He started the season off well. Right from the first two heats in Indonesia, he won both of them first time out at Yogyakarta. And he's just got better and better as the year has gone on. A good ride just a fortnight ago at Fox Hills in the UK. That kept him well up in the points. Top of the leadership board, Yamaha and Chico Chiodi. He might well say it's not easy, but he certainly makes it look very, very easy. Weekend after weekend, Jamie Dobb. That's another youngster that really has got better and better. He had some good experiences in the States. He's come back to ride out of the UK. He will base himself here for the rest of 1997. And of course, 1998 is a long, long way away and we have no idea what his plans might be for the following year but he's certainly giving his sponsor some smiles each weekend and that's good for british motocross as well bob moore nice to see him back again from injury he damaged his elbow had a problem with his wrist had a problem with a finger he really has had some crazy injuries and that's kept him away alessandra puzar now starting to rack up some more points today racing at Slovenia with the ever-flying little Italian 121 Chico Chiodi on the Yamaha that have proved to be the bikes to beat in 1997 they are very very quick indeed incredible horsepower they're talking about 40 horsepower plus coming out of these machines those are the quick Rinaldi machines and with some very, very clever work on the motors coming from all over Europe. That's Vial and it's a great shame that he went missing in the midsection of the season because Vial on a good day certainly can run with the very, very best. So can Camelengo, but injuries have plagued them and Chiodi has just been far too consistent to let them even get close. The only man really to catch him now as the season goes into three, the three quarter way mark is going to be Federici perhaps and Alessandro Puzar. Malin way, way out of contention now. He started the year certainly as a favorite. The riders all said that they feared Malin could do it. He went missing in Indonesia right at the beginning of the year and he's just not been able to come back from that. He's had injury after injury. So he really has to put the rest of the year behind him and start making plans with Cadbury Boost for 1998. Camelengo, he's done everything right at Slovenia. 
so has Federici. Then into our picture comes Vilman. He's had a strong, consistent ride. And so has number 18, Travesini. And behind him, surely, we must see Carl Nunn coming into our frame as well. Now that's Bob Moore first. So Bob Moore still in the front of the pack. Then we've got number 12 coming into our frame. That's Massio. Chico Chiodi now starting to get up to the front, but he's left it very, very late. I think it's too little too late. He is not going to catch the flying Vial. Checkered flag comes down and a race victory for Vial. Second is going to be Camalingo. And third, number 25, Federici. No time for that. Back down to the gate yet again. Final heat in Slovenia. Round seven of the World 1 to 5 GPs. Well, a Kawasaki. But can he get it through the first corner? They've got a hook left. That Kawasaki came out the gate quickly, but he was on the wrong side of the track at the end of the start. Kiko Kiyoti, 121. Camalengo follows him. Federici is there as well. Where is Jamie Dobb? Where is Carl Nunn? Where is Brian Jorgensen? Pizar is a long way down through the pack at this stage. Where's the Suzuki? There's the Suzuki of Jamie Dobb. But up front, he knows what he's got to do. He wants to come away from Slovenia in round seven with a very, very, very strong lead. Vial has picked up a few extra points, but I don't think it's going to be nearly enough. Chiodi, Federici and Puzar, I think it's going to come from one of the three musketeers as round seven at Slovenia is going to come to an end. It's Chiodi that is still just racking up the points weekend after weekend. Federici is always there, but not really close enough in the overall title hunt. Alessandro Puzar has had a very, very solid year so far with some incredibly good rides, but they can't fathom out how to beat this little man, Kiyote. A very, very professional setup. You see his pit crews all around the circuit. They give him very, very professional advice. He knows exactly where he is and what he's got to do. Never needs to extend himself, very much like Stefan Everts. He knows exactly what he's got to do to get the checkered flag. Will not get embroiled in an unnecessary banging of handlebars. But having said that, Federici is closing very, very quickly. And in fact, Federici has made the move away from our cameras. Federici has gone to the front. Chiodi goes to second. Puzar will go to third. And Federici must surely believe that he's got this one in the bag. Well, he knows. The crowd acknowledge it. Federici has done enough to take the win. Chiodi is going to take second. And Puzar for a well-earned third. <music> Round eight of the 125 World Championship took us across to Germany and the rain yet again. Down to the line they go. Puzar's ready for this. Just reminds Travesini to catch a bit of a wake up there. Does Brian Jorgensen have a problem? That's not good news. The cat finning machine. Well, does he get back onto the gate or not? That's the question. The mud, the rain, and away they go. Bob Moore not looking a happy chap. The bike parked at the back of the circuit. Vial has gone to the front in the mud. Puzar has gone to second. Can you believe Chico Chiodi is there yet again, already through into third position. But Vial, since he's come back, he's starting to rack up some points. But I can't believe he's get up, going to get up onto the leadership board. He's left it far too late in the series. Only three races remain after Germany, and that's not enough for Vial. Mathematically, it's all about Chiodi, Federici, and Puzar. Vial certainly a very, very strong contender and he's doing a great job of work for his sponsor as he always does. But the season is ticking away and if you don't come right in the first two or three, you ain't going no place. And that's a shame for Vial 
because he has put in some very, very strong rides indeed. I'm surprised that they can even see their rider at number 25. He just lies it down, Federici, normally up front and flying, just lies the bike down and says, I've actually had enough of this mud. Let's get onto a dry circuit. It really is very, very sticky, the circuit. Often you can see a dry line at the bottom of the rut, but there's no dry lines here in Germany today. That is wet right the way down to the bottom. It's like glass to ride on that stuff. And when the bike starts sliding, you ain't going to do nothing about it. So Vial doing everything he can to try and pick up some very valuable points. Coyote just doing a U-turn in the middle of the circuit. Alessandro Puzar has now gone to the front. So he has taken over the lead of this race. Coyote will go to second. Then we pick up Jasinski starting to move through the pack as well. And then behind him, and it surely must be in fifth position, Jimmy Verberg on bike number 57. Well, they've just about done enough work. I must wonder what he has to do to pick up these all important points. Coyote made a mistake when we saw him do a U-turn. So Puzar has gone to the front, but that's not to say that he's going to win this race. He's still got to keep everything pointing in the right direction. And he knows that there's riders behind him doing well. Kaczynski having a very, very good ride indeed. But Puzar has just got to keep it through a couple more corners, not drop it in the mud, and he will have done enough. Vial, another solid ride from him. And that allows Kaczynski to come through. Back marker very kindly just moves out the way. Space for Coyote as well. Not the best racing conditions in the world, but a win's a win. Alessandro Pizarro takes the win, and that will cheer him up no end. Second over the line is Vial. And with no time at all, quickly to the podium, and 40 rain-soaked riders back to the line for heat number two here in Germany in round eight of the 125 World Championship. Who is it going to be? The bikes are clean. The numbers we can see in the first turn. Bobby Moore is there. Well, who's it going to be? Vial now. He's got all the mud off the bike. The is drying out a touch. And it's only a very, very small touch. One lap with clean boards. Nice to see Bob Moore there, but Vial has gone straight to the front. Bobby Moore has gone to second. Coyote knows that he won't get too far down in the points today. He's got to keep banking them up. Thirds and fourths are more than good enough for him at the moment. Vial out of the hunt overall and very nearly out of the circuit as well. Puts the power on and the bike says, I'll just go in whatever direction I choose. You can do whatever you want. That bike's got a mind of its own today. Got plenty of time to read his pit boards as he goes speedway style through the mud. Bob Moore looked wonderful in the first corner in his new outfit, but that was soon to change. Puzar, well up there yet again. You can really only pick up the numbers on the back of their shirts. Jamie Dobb, well, what does he have to say about the mud, I wonder? Jamie Dobb on the Rob Hooper Suzuki. But this is a man that has looked good all weekend. Pity that the rain came and spoiled a very, very well prepared circuit. So, Jamie Dobb will certainly pick up some extra points this weekend. Bob Moore, nice to see him back from some crazy little injuries throughout the year. Vial also plagued with injuries, just hasn't been able to keep it all together. And it's back to consistency and it's back to Federici and Coyote and Puzar. The three men that have been so dominant and it's really been Yamaha's year. The bikes, absolutely incredible performance coming out of them. The tuners in Europe have got them together. Jasinski having a very, very strong ride in the mud. That's obviously his forte. Funny how different riders shine in different conditions. We saw Jimmy Verberg, bike number 57, in the first heat of the day. 
looking much, much better than usual. Nice to see him in the frame as well. But a difficult weekend for all the riders in the 125 class. Only three GPs remain. I think that Kiyoti has done enough. Federici might think differently. Puzar might also think differently. But I think it's going to go to Kiyoti at the end of the day. A win today for Vial, and he'll be happy with that. Second man is going to be a very tired and a very muddy Alessandro Puzar. And so to round nine in Finland, the year starting to draw to a close and we're starting to see exactly who is dominating and that's the man on the Yamaha. Kiko Kiyoti, another couple of wins today and he could well be on his way to a world championship and he certainly deserves it. Race one, Bob Moore in Finland Father Christmas country and could this be a present from Father Christmas for Bob Moore or could it be the flying Jamie Dobb that's just getting better and better as the year progresses. So Kiko Kiyoti, he's in the saddle, he knows what to do. The circuit immaculately prepared, a very different texture to what we saw in Germany with the mud. Very, very nice. It's not a thick loamy sand, but it is a sandy circuit but it's not sand as we know in Belgium. And certainly all the riders very, very impressed with the circuit that has been given that to them today. A long way to travel, of course, but there's Grand Prix championship points and a world title at stake. Puzar just putting in another day's work for him. Nice to see Bob Moore back. The Americans would certainly like a circuit like this. Bob Moore, he's had a very, very mixed season. He's had injuries. They haven't been of a major nature, but they've been enough to keep him out of the racing. A bit like Malin, they haven't been major injuries, but Malin has just not been able to be there. That man certainly has not missed a race. We've seen him every single weekend. In fact, he's not missed one heat so far, and that's what it's all about. We've seen exactly the same from Stefan Everts in the 250 class and it just shows you've got to be there every single weekend if you have a dnf or an injury you've got a problem we saw jamie dobb with a problem at fox hills in the first heat that cost him valuable points and at gp level you really just can't afford to let the clock tick away the same went for talent boland some crazy injuries during the year now in the 125 class they've come across to finland and really they need to start putting this whole thing to bed now and Chiodi must surely know that unless he has a major DNF or a major injury problem, Federici and Puzar don't really have a mathematical chance of catching him. He could almost circulate a couple more checkered flags. That won't do Bobby Moore any harm at all. A very good ride from him. Nice to see this popular youngster on the podium with his flowers. Whether, of course, he can do it a second time. He hasn't been the most consistent rider. Look at Jamie Dobb screaming that Suzuki into the first turn. He was in the right place at the right time. He just didn't have the legs to get into that right-hand turn. So Vial has gone to the front very, very quickly. Federici has tucked in behind him. And it really is time to start doing some adding up well. We said Jamie Dobb didn't get the best start in the world. He certainly didn't get the worst either. He moved across to get in line. He seemed to run out of horsepower, but a few corners further on and Jamie Dobb is up in the top five. And that's certainly a very, very nice place to be. Alessandra Puzar goes to the front. Vial goes to second. Kiyoti goes to third. And he must know mathematically he can start working out race after race. Jamie Dobb goes to fourth. Nothing wrong with that. And I have to question why Bob Moore can't start stringing his races together. 
He has a win and then a fifth, a win and then an eighth, and he just needs two wins on the day, and that's what has hounded him all season through. And that's where Coyote has been so good. He's always been in the top three. Normally, he's been first. Jamie Dobb, this rider really has got better and better. And he must know that rides like this late in the season will certainly enhance the possibility of him getting to the motocross designations during the middle of September. But of course, it's early days to start saying who might go to that race meeting in Belgium. But certainly Jamie Dobb looking very, very positive. Pizar back in the front, being hounded yet again by Coyote. And we keep saying that these three riders, Pizar, Coyote, and Federici have always been the top three riders. Coyote has just been a little more consistent. And there he is yet again. He knows that mathematically they ain't gonna catch him. Only three races remain in the 125 GP World Championship as we head for Slovakia. Kiori looking better and better, and this could be the weekend to wrap it up. First heat of the day, weather conditions absolutely perfect for motocross. Bob Moore looking good in practice. Kiori, Federici, Puzar all looking very, very strong. Who went down on the first corner? Jamie Dobb. Well, what a shame. Jamie Dobb went very, very tight on the inside line. Either the fire went out or he has a mechanical problem. Either way, he is out of the race at the moment. Number 25, Federici, has gone to the front very, very quickly. Nice to see Bartolini tuck in behind him. There again, there's Bob Moore. Bob Moore had a very, very good ride in the first heat in Finland. But today it looks as if it's the turn of the flying Federici. Quixote, he is just always there. Let's the race settle down, finds his own rhythm. And here in Slovakia today, the 10th round of the World Championship, only two rounds remain after today. Quixote knows that he could well wrap it up today. Bob Moore needs some valuable points before deciding on what he's doing for next year. Federici appears to have things well under control. Very difficult ground conditions here in Slovakia. It's very, very hard indeed. Very difficult to get traction, but Coyote sets off after to Federici, all in another day's work. And can you believe the rain has started again? And we've seen plenty of that this year. We saw it in Germany, and we certainly have had plenty of wet races. So Kiko Coyote, can he get onto the podium today? Bartolini, bike number 20. And then number 12, Masio. Well, this is good. Number 14 coming into our frame to Pasqua. We saw him earlier. Moving through the pack very, very quickly. And number 14 to Pasquia certainly has passed a couple of riders. Number 25, that's Federici. But de Pasquia has gone to the front. Chiodi now in a torrential rainstorm. Well, this will certainly mix up the points. Bartolini is there as well. But the Kawasaki mounted man, there he is to Pasquia. Did a lot of work to get through the front. He is going to take the win. Nothing wrong with that. And so straight back to the start line for the final heat of the day at Slovakia. A great win for de Pasquia in the first heat. Can he do it again? Can Bob Moore pull something out of the bag? Certainly in the first corner, Bob Moore was there. You can always see the white riding gear of Bob Moore. Very, very distinguishable and easy to pick up. But the race is going to be between Coyote and Puzar. That's where the race victory is going to come from today. Coyote and Puzar, who is going to take the checkered flag today? We won't have to wait too much longer to find out. The end is in sight. 
a race victory to Alessandro Puzar up onto the podium straight away. And so to Belgium for round 11. 95 riders attempted to qualify in Belgium. 40 made it and 55 went home unsuccessful. This is the home of motorsport worldwide. A magnificent circuit. The penultimate 125 World Championship event. Kyoto knows what he's got to do. Vial comes out absolutely blistering. Kyoto goes to second. Puzar goes to third. We're going to see riders today that we haven't seen before. They come crawling out of the woodwork because this is the national sport in Belgium and they want some recognition. They want sponsors for 1998. Kyoto wants a world title. Puzar wants to hound him all the way. Federici wants to get in there. Vial wants to fly the flag for his sponsor. The Belgium fans just adore motocross. You can't get better support than this anywhere in the world. By Belgium standards, it's a stony circuit. Normally they ride in very, very thick sand. Of course, they have the motocross designations coming up in just a month's time as well. So they will use a completely different circuit again. Now, the penultimate round of the 125 World Championship. What a pity that Vial had injuries during the middle of the season and that cost him very, very dearly. All of a sudden, Vial is going like a rocket. Chiodi has got some work to do. Puzar has never given up the whole year through. Neither has Federici. Well, they rise to the occasion today. They've got good weather, a superb circuit. Spectators have lined the entire track. In practice, we saw some names that we haven't seen before. The youngster Gunderson from Sweden came across and qualified very, very well indeed. One of the riders that I'm sure we're going to see in 1998. He was across at the Schoolboy International and really set the circuit alight at Milden Hall. Number 12, Mossio again in our frame. Number 11 is there. That's Brian Jorgensen as well. He's certainly having a good ride. And there's time for showtime as well from the winner in heat number one, Vial. And a quick respite for Mr. Puzar and to the podium before straight down to the line, heat number two in the Belgian GP. Eyes down, look in, they've got it all to do again. I don't believe it's going to be that easy for Vial the second time round. Kiyoti wants to wrap up the title, but Vial is blistering again. Bob Moore, welcome to Belgium. He's in there with a chance. They have come out now. Camelengo's there. Jamie Dobby's there. Well, it has been a great weekend. Kiyoti is a long way back, and I'm not sure why. That's a strange thing. It looks as if it's going to go all the way to Holland before Kiyoti can tell us all about his world championship. That's Jamie Dobb keeping it all on the island. But Vial came here looking very, very strong indeed. He won heat number one. Now he's in the front again. He's got Bobby Moore chasing him. Jamie Dobb putting in a great, great ride. That will get the Union Jacks out in the mob here today. Then, of course, is Puzal always there weekend after weekend. And he's now got Bob Moore chasing him. Up and over he goes. Aha! Paul Malin, bike number two. Cadbury Boost Yamaha with Jamie Dobb right behind him. That's going to be an interesting contest because the motocross designation selections are right in the pipeline as we talk. And Paul Malin will certainly want to put on a great display. Paul has gone past Bob Moore. Jamie Dobb will set after him. Puzar will set off after Jamie Dobb. But of course, Puzar knows that he's well up in the points overall. One race remains only. Masio doing it all fine at the moment. It really is good to see Paul Malin and the Cadbury Boost Yamaha far too late in the season, but having a good ride in Belgium. Paul knows he's got to fly the flag in 1998, and that might well be his last chance ever. So, to the front goes Paul Malin. 
Paul Malin goes to the front in the Belgian Grand Prix. Vial goes into second. Well, Malin certainly will be very, very happy with this ride. With the luck that he's had in 1997, can he take it right to the flag? No, a problem for Malin. Malin all fall down. Vial takes a second win for the day. Puzar takes second and Malin finishes third. And so to Holland for the final race of the year. The last 125 GP and out of this will come a new world champion for 1997. Kiyote talking to his supporters and Johan Boonen just giving him some advice on the circuit here in Holland today. So the fastest man in practice in qualifying, Eggens, can you believe that? He is the man to catch. Kiyote with a world championship perhaps just around the corner. Puzar and Federici, they know that it's late in the day. Vial would like a win. Bob Moore, of course, can pull a win out of the bag almost at will. And away they go. Two heats remain in the 125 GP World Championship. And into the front goes Federici. Vial is well up with them as well. What happened to Eggins, the man that was so quick in practice? Jamie Dobb is out there. Remember Jamie Dobb and Malin both fighting for positions on the British team for the motocross designations. They'll both want to be there. Malin has had a disastrous year. Who has gone down? Who has gone down in that corner? Number three, that's Vial that has been so good in recent weeks. Vial was very, very strong in Belgium. He put in some great rides there. But it's all about Federici, Puzar and Kiyote. Kiyote must certainly come away from Holland today, I would think. Let's not speak too soon and do a Murray Walker on the crowd. But certainly Kiyote must come away, the new world champion. Look how rough it is through the back section in the trees there. Jamie Dobb taking it in his stride. Number 100, Alessandro Puzar. But Kiyote is the man that has almost got to finish at walking pace. He's got to cross the line. And that's all he's got to do today. And the little man, Kiko Kiyote, will be the new 1997 125 world champion aboard his Yamaha and a great job of work there he is we see him in our picture now he has got to think this one out very very carefully he cannot afford a DNF he's got to keep it together he knows that Federici will go for a win and a win and Pizar will go for exactly the same so Pizar listen to the crowd Federici he's got everything under control at the moment but Kiyote is the man that has got so much at stake he's been faultless right throughout the year and they want to race into every single corner. Puzar, look at the ground conditions at the circuit in Holland. Unbelievable. They just tell him, just keep it together. Don't do anything stupid. They know that he's done enough all through the year. Federici has looked so good. Well, the track has really broken up. And this is what good motocross is all about. Kiyote, a lot of supporters will be here today. Very, very popular Italian rider riding in Holland today in the last 125 Grand Prix of the year. It's been a long and interesting season. They've had the rain, they've had the mud, they've had the hard tracks. Vial has had injury, Moore's had injury, Paul Malin has had injury. Jamie Dobb came good a little too late in the season, but he certainly has put in some very, very strong rides and right now Jamie Dobb ahead of Puzar and he knows that he's a Coyote supporter and they really are colorful and they're a big part of motocross and that's what it's all about the national sport in Belgium and in Holland it's so so popular as well well they've got this race and another 45 minutes and that's the end of the 125 GP season who is it going to be after 12 races, it's going to go right down to the wire. Can you believe it? If only Jamie Dobb 
had have been up front in Indonesia and in France and Spain, he could have well been on the leadership board. But it's certainly looking good for him for 1997. And I'm sure the sponsors are having a very, very good look at Jamie Dobb already. He's certainly done a great job of work. That's Kiyote, just keeping it all together. He really has been so consistent. Jamie Dobb there, the meat in the sandwich. He's got Puzar behind him. And ahead of him, he has one more corner and a checkered flag. He's done enough. Federici will win the race. Van Drunen will take second and a well-deserved second. But the new world champion, number 121, Kiyote has got it. The supporters are ecstatic. Yamaha win the 125 World Championship with Kiko Kiyote in Holland. What a great victory. Second overall in the World Championships, Alessandro Puzar, number 100. And indeed, he can be very, very proud of that as they throw Kiyote in the air and then drop him on his butt. And so to the podium, an ever-beaming Kiko Kiyote, the new world champion, is taken over from Tortelli and a win for Yamaha. Well, it's not over. They've got to go straight back to the line and do it all over again. A smiling Puzar, gracious in what he's done, and he certainly can be proud of a great year's racing. Down to the line for the last time, and the last time for Bob Moore. He will retire after this race today and take up team management in the US of A. They hurtle towards the first corner for the... Oh, and somebody has gone down. Somebody went down in a big pile on that corner. We'll pick up with our cameraman, but Eggins goes to the front. We're told that it's Carl Nunn that has gone down. Well, that's a shame. Eggins, sensational in practice. Well, if you ever wanted to get your suspension right, you better get it right today. This is Yandukruid country. If there's bad bumps and humps and lumps, Yandukruid, the suspension wizard, would just love to have something to do with it today. That is the new world champion, and he knows all about riding the circuits of the world. That is Brian Jorgensen. Look at this magnificent motocross circuit. It's wonderful. I wonder if Jamie Dobb thinks the same. The circuit really is. This is a test of skill. Eggins, so good in practice. He couldn't put it to good effect in the first heat of the day. He's certainly done a whole lot better in the second heat and looked very, very professional indeed. That is the world champion going away from us at the moment. Kiko Kiyote aboard the Yamaha. He's already had a quick sip of champagne and plenty more to follow at the end of today. A magnificent day in Holland for the final race of the 125 GP series. We started in Indonesia. We've been all around the world. Two weeks ago in Belgium and then a grand finale in Holland today. Kiyote and Yamaha are the new world champions and deservedly so. The bike has not failed once. Out of 12 races I've seen him in this year, not once has the bike faltered. He puts his hand in the air. What a great finale for this young man and for Yamaha. Well, always the bridesmaid and never the bride. After 94 and 95, two second places. The sign says it all. The plate says it all. Chico Chiodi and Yamaha, what a great year they've had together. Una famiglia che è riuscita a arrivare fino in fondo e ce l'abbiamo fatta. He says he wants to thank the team very much because uh, after signing with them at the end of last year, they worked very well together, they work like a family, and uh, he can't thank them enough for, uh, for this title. And so the final word to Bob Moore on 97. 12 seasons in Europe, is it really all over for you? Well, it's, for me, it's, it's over in one sense, but I start anew, you know. I, I start again uh, like a new life for me. I, I go back to America. I stay involved with motocross. Um, I'm working for another team, Honda. But um, anyways, for me, I'm very excited because to go back to America now, which is what I was planning on doing anyways, and for me to get a job like this is, is the best. I mean, I, I couldn't ask for anything, anything better. I'm really blessed as far as that went. So 
Um, I'm really excited. I go home. I, I'm going to be still involved with riding a lot of the bikes, testing and suspension, motor, and, and being behind the riders a lot. So um, I'll still be involved with racing a lot. And, and also I get to go to all the races. So it's, it's going to be a little different, but it's still the same. You're going to get to go all the races, but are you going to be racing at all, AMA Nationals? Well, that's, you know, I, I haven't completely said no or yes that part. Um, Honda did say that if I wanted to do the Nationals, they would give me a bike. Um, but, you know, I, I just have to wait and see how everything's going in the beginning of the year. I'm going to have a lot of work to do this winter. You know, as soon as I go back next week, I already start testing tires and different things. So I have a lot of work, and, it, and it, you know, it's going to take a lot away from training and stuff. And the, the things that you have to do to, to be a professional racer is completely different than what you have to do to be a team manager. So if, uh, if I feel that my speed is good and my condition is is also very well then then yeah i might do some nationals next year also 1994 the one world title do you look back at that sometimes and think perhaps that should have been more yeah but still i i'm i'm very lucky to even i mean i'm, I'm happy i even did that one you know I, I still think about that almost every day shoot i was world champion you know for me that's i did everything that i wanted to do in europe i, I won a world title I won over 29, uh, 29 GP races. I got over 2,400 something points. You know, I was three times world, a well, vice world champion once in the 250. Uh, yeah, I, I wish maybe those three vice world champions would have been world champion, but still, uh, for me, I won the world championship at least once, and that was what I came over here to do. And it took me nine years to do it, but anyways, I did it. So. The years after were, you know, I did the first year after the World Championship, I went to 250, and that was, it was kind of tough, but still, I was, I was there, and then I got injured, and then every year from then, I've been injured, so, you know, I can't really say that I did really bad after that, but still, I got... One world title is a lot more than a lot of guys <laughs> have ever had. That's right, yeah. For me, you know, I think about it a lot, and, and you know, that season, it... It just nothing went wrong. I mean, uh, you start out the year, and, and and I started. I won the first race, and after that, you know, I won over half of the races that year. So it was it was a perfect season. Well, we started in '91, and we've enjoyed six years of your company. Um, it's going to be fairly difficult to find a replacement, but everybody at Motivision, the fans in Great Britain and Ireland, that have enjoyed you race so often. Uh, wish you every success in the future. All right, thank you, and. Uh, on that note, um, I'm going to be leaving this season, but I've already sketched into my calendar for next year, Fox Hill, or whatever track it's going to be for the 125 and 250. Um, I want to come to England and watch, and, and also I'll be able to, to stay hopefully a week and uh, hang out with you guys and do some golf or something. Hey, Bob, Bob Moore, thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you.